Hey guys, how's it going? So in this video, we are going to go over the bisection method, which is a numerical method to find out the root of an equation. So basically, for example, if you have a function, let's say f of x, then you find out the values of x for which the function equals zero. So the need for uh, such uh, numerical methods basically arises from the fact that sometimes it is very difficult to do or perform a symbolic computation. For example, if I ask you to find out the roots of a function f of x defined as sine of, let's say, the cosine of, let's say, the exponential <laughs> of x. Now, as you can imagine, you wouldn't want to be finding out the roots of such a function by hand, of course. But if you have access to a computer as well as a programming language, then actually it is very easy to find out the rules of such a function by writing some code using the numerical techniques such as the bisection method that we are going to learn today. So here I have a function f of x that I have plotted as you can see over here and as you can see that the root of the function lies somewhere here. Now what we are going to do in bisection method is we are going to come up with some initial guesses a and b let's say the a lies here and the b point lies here so basically we are going to come up with some initial guesses for x values that are supposed to bracket the root that is the root must belong within the interval a and b so now you might ask me that okay that sounds a bit weird you're telling me that i need to come up with two initial guesses a and b and ensure that they bracket the root that is the root lies within those points i don't even know what the root is yet i'm going to use this method to find out the root of the equation so how can i make sure that the answer is actually very simple you can very easily verify or ensure that these initial guesses bracket the root by doing the following when you just check whether f of a multiplied by f of b is less than zero or not if f of a multiplied by f of b is less than zero then it implies that the root lies within the interval a and b now why do i say so so let's have a look over here so here i say that the value of the function at x equals to a is f of a and similarly the value of the function at x equals to b is actually f of b now as you can see very easily that f of a is actually positive while f of b is actually negative therefore the multiplication or the product of f of a and f of b is of course going to be negative and in such a scenario where the root is within these points then of course this product is going to be negative and you can see over here that the function f of x when it is basic when it passes through the roots root it actually changes sign from positive to negative so basically what i'm saying is that whenever your function passes through the root root it changes its sign thereby ensuring that the product of f of a and f of b if they bracket the root is going to be negative similar situation can happen when let's say your function goes from negative to positive it passes through the root in this direction in this direction of course the f of a would be negative and f of b would be positive and thereby again the product of these two would be less than zero or rather negative therefore um, so it is a very simple thing to ensure that your initial guesses bracket the root or not now what is the next step so the next step would be to calculate the value of c defined as a plus b divided by 2 so what we are basically doing is we are bisecting this interval a b into half so this would be our c and that is why this method is actually known as the bisection method because you start some with some interval using your initial guesses a and b and you keep on dividing or bisecting this interval until you narrow down your root within some error limits so as you can see over here that our new um, point c is right at the middle of a and b 
So this basically is your first iteration of the bisection method. As you might know that the numerical methods are iterational in nature. So you perform various iterations. So similarly here we have made the first iteration where we have calculated the value of C. Now in the next iteration, what we are going to do is we are going to check whether the root lies within the interval a and C or does it lie within the interval C and B and we will adjust our initial guesses or rather the um, guess range accordingly. So as you can very easily see here that the root actually lies within the interval A and C. Therefore what we do is that in the next iteration, iteration 2 maybe, and we calculate the lower bound of the initial guess that is let's call it A prime. Um, we let it remain a however the upper bound that was earlier b let's call it b prime now actually becomes c this time so basically now we readjust or redefine our root or rather we narrow down our search window to this interval a and c over here so this is extremely useful because at each iteration you are basically dividing the interval in half and hence narrowing down your search window for the root and you keep on repeating it. Now here I could tell that the root lies within A and C by just looking at the graph. However, in reality you won't of course have an access to such a graph. So you will again, as I have stated already, you will do something like that, like this. You will do a calculation of F of A multiplied by F of C and check whether it is less positive or negative and similarly you will calculate f of c multiplied by f of b and check whether it is positive or negative and if this is negative then of course you know that the root lies within a and c however if this is negative then you know that root lies between C and B. So in that case, uh, you will say that the root lies between C and B as highlighted over here as well. However, in our case, actually the root lies between A and C as highlighted using the green highlighter. And then the next step would again be to calculate some new C, let's call it C prime and this would basically be a prime plus b prime divided by 2 and in our case it is basically a plus c divided by 2 and we keep on creating new iterations where we keep on bisecting our search window we start from a and b initial guesses we narrow them down we check whether which half of the um, initial interval contains the root and then we adjust our interval according to that and we keep on doing so. So ba that basically is the idea of the bisection method. Now you might be wondering when do I stop? You say that I keep on finding the new values of C and E iteration and keep adjusting my search window but when do I actually stop? So the condition for stopping is actually very simple. You basically stop when your f of C or rather the absolute value of f of C is less than some error limit that you may have so maybe something like 10 to the minus 6 maybe that is good enough for you or whatever is good enough for you you uh, terminate your iterations then now let's try to do an example because i believe that these methods are best explained when we are working with some examples so let's work on an example where we calculate the root of an equation given by x squared minus 4. So symbolically or analytically it is very easy to see that x squared minus 4 equals 0 that means the roots are basically plus minus 2. So we have two roots in this case either plus 2 or minus 2. So since there are two roots um, you cannot really find out both the roots simultaneously in bisection methods. So in order to find out the positive root you will have to have initial guesses according to that and similarly in order to find out the negative root you will have to adjust your initial guesses accordingly. For example for negative root you will need negative um, initial guesses and similarly for positive root you will require either at least one uh, positive value of the initial guess. So these are the analytical roots and now let's try to find the um, numerical root using the um, bisection method. So what should we use for our initial guesses? I guess 
In order to make the computation very fast, I will use a very good initial guess that is a equals zero and b equals eight. So at the first iteration, iteration number one, I'm going to be calculating c equals a plus b by two. And that gives us eight over two, that is four. So our midpoint of a and b is four. Now we check whether the root lies between A and C or does it lie between C and B. So we do F of A multiplied by F of C which is equal to 0 squared minus 4 multiplied by 4 squared minus 4 and that is equal to minus 4 times 16 minus 4 12 that is minus 48, which is negative. Now, since f of a multiplied by f of c is less than zero, therefore we know that this condition over here is, is true, completely true. Now, before we move on to the next iteration, what we might want to do is we might want to check whether we, ha we have reached very close to the root or not. And we do that by checking the value of f of c. Now here we can see that the absolute value of f of c is actually 12 and this is very far from zero. So of course this cannot be a root. So next we go to the next iteration. This time we set our a as the starting a that was zero. However, our b now becomes equal to c, the previous c, which was four. And now we calculate the value of c, which is basically two this time because four, a plus b, zero plus four divided by two is two. Now this we already know is our root, but uh, if it was a computer doing this, then of course the computer would uh, check whether the absolute value of f of c lies within some error limits, let's say 10 to the minus six. And here, of course, the value of f of c is actually zero, which is of course less than 10 to the minus six. And that means we have succeeded in finding the root. So that is basically the gist of the bisection method. You start with some initial window, bracketing your root, and then you keep on narrowing down your search by dividing this initial window in half at each step. So that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. In my next few tutorials, I will be talking about the error as well as the order of the bisection method. The error basically will help you uh, understand how many iterations you will need to make to get the value of the root within some error limits. Similarly, the order of the bisection method will basically tell you how fast your um, bisection method converges to your root. And of course, I will be making some videos on Newton Raphson method, secant method, fixed point, iteration method, and so on. So stay tuned and subscribe to the channel for such videos. And in case you guys enjoy this video, then don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks for watching and have a great day.